Hey, hey, I mean, is this the new Honda Civic Si? It is, yep. I haven't yeah. seen one of these. You must work for Honda. Yeah, well, I just pulled in because we're, we're prepping it for the next event. I didn't really expect anyone to. Why, what's the yellow spray paint? Why do you have that? What are you doing? You know, I don't want to be rude. I'm actually in a bit of a rush to get this ready. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry right. about that. All right, well, anyway, okay. nice car. Thanks, yeah, cheers. cheers. House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the new 11th generation Civic SI. And this car is important because it represents one of only a couple cars on the market that allow you to enjoy your commute to work and convince your significant other or your parents that you bought something that's practical and economical. Gone are the days of high revving, naturally aspirated little Civics. For a while now, we've had a turbocharged 1.5 liter engine. This latest one though, has the same engine as last year. Yeah, but with less power actually, five horsepower less apparently. That's since been disputed though, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But more importantly, this SI takes the form of the 11th generation Civic, which as we know is a little bit longer, has an updated interior, and since it is the SI, it gets some fun hand-me-downs from the Type R. In Canada, it comes very well equipped at just over $33,000 Canadian, but it's not without competition. So is it worth the cash? Let's find out. <laughs> If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, in the SI, manual only as is tradition. And all the power, 200 horsepower of which, is going to those front wheels only. That is a few horsepower down from last year, but Hondata with their dyno have found that this is actually putting down more power than Honda is saying, and more power than the previous generation. And the torque, which is the same this year, has actually got a flatter curve and comes in lower. Apart from all those things, I've never really swiped right for this engine, but more power, flatter torque curve, torque available down low, peak horsepower is available higher now, 6,000 RPM. That's all good stuff. But even though I get to be in that boost for longer this year, I still don't get that much engine to enjoy before I hit the red line. Even though now they've upped the enjoyment of hitting red line because at least in Canada, we get shift lights above the dash, which make it kind of fun. The beep means I must shift. I implore you to shift. And you get to see those shift lights a lot because the gear ratios, are quite short. The top of second gear is 80 kilometers an hour-ish, which means I can be almost at the top of third gear and still be within legal speeds as I'm pulling onto the highway. There's other things that Honda gets to boast about this year. One being that the Civic Si is longer than anything in its class. Yeah, we, we know Honda. It, it's too big, that's what we, all right. But that comes with some positives at least. This is a more settled car, better for high speed stability. And as much as I can complain about a 1.5 litre displacement not being enough, it means it gets great fuel economy. Something that we can't boast about the new GR86 or Subaru BRZ. It also makes you feel less guilty when you drive the absolute piss out of it, which is kind of the most rewarding way to drive a Civic SI. This year they've done some fun stuff with the exhaust. It's not naturally aspirated, obviously, so it doesn't have that whale, but it sounds pretty good. And because this has an LSD, I can plant my foot in the corner and that inside wheel doesn't spin. Something like the Elantra N-Line doesn't have an LSD. Not the full-blown N, just the N-Line. This, the GTI, the GLI, they've all got it. And if you're gonna drive in a sporty fashion, you want an LSD. 
Although, it's worth noting that it's not as quick as the GTI or the GLI. Its 0 to 60 time hovers around in the 7 second region. But, you do have to shift twice in the SI before you get there. So the actual number is borderline irrelevant. I really enjoy driving this car because it rewards you for driving it hard. And one of the only other things that could prevent that from happening is something that the previous generation punished you for, which was shifting aggressively, because it had something called rev hang. Last year, the Civic Si and the normal Civic had a big problem with rev hang. Basically, you'd run to the red line, push in the clutch, and you could go rewatch Endgame while you waited for the revs to fall before you could catch the next gear. Okay, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't good. And that was due in part to the fact that it had a dual mass flywheel. You see, the flywheel is the part between the clutch and the engine. It kind of keeps the engine spinning. A dual mass flywheel is big and heavy and has springs in it to dampen driveline vibrations and noise. This year, they've gone to a single mass flywheel. A single mass flywheel is lighter, maybe has some more noise and vibrations, but you should get better throttle response and the revs should fall quicker between the gears. And guess what? They don't really. But the lighter flywheel doesn't seem to punish you as much if you shift aggressively. There isn't as much of a lurch when grabbing the next gear. And I don't know, there might be some sort of a clutch delay valve or something, or the pressure plate itself isn't that strong because you can just kind of rip through the gears and there's no serious lurch no matter what, even though you can hear it pulling the engine down if you shift really quickly. And I've even managed to disable that annoying alarm that James had going a minute ago in the car. This shifter is really good. The previous generation SI shifter I found to be a bit too wimpy. This one feels just a little bit more solid. It's like a classic Honda feeling shifter. Short throws, really well gated. And now we get rev matching as an option, which I've gone all the way into the menus and turned off because I don't really like auto rev match. I prefer to lift the throttle myself, which I can do because the pedals are spaced perfectly for heel and toe. The, the shifting experience of this car is great. The engine maybe lets it down a little bit because just by the time you get into the boost and get some power, you, you have to shift. But at least you get to enjoy the act of shifting, which is rare these days. And if I come to a stop and actually launch the thing with the traction control off, it doesn't do any wheel hop like a GTI. It does do a full burnout though. No wheel hop, off we go. <laughs> it's a fun little car. It inspires you to just rip it. It's really fun. So I respect Honda for deciding to go with a lighter single mass flywheel. That's a performance decision. And they didn't really stop there. This has got type R suspension parts in it. And it's still quite light. The lightest in its class. It's under 3,000 pounds. I can feel it in the corners. It, it's, it's a fun little car to chuck around. And since it has a diff, like James mentioned, I can just power myself through these. Yeah, that's just fun. Steering feels good too. They've actually strengthened the torsion rod the bit that connects the steering wheel to the actual steering rack. They've strengthened it this year, so it's even more direct. They've made all the right choices with this car. They have, they did the right things. And despite all the stiffer stuff, it's still not a compromised ride. Stiffer than a base Civic, sure, but the extra firmness in the suspension is worth every bit of confidence and lack of body roll in the corners. We were just in the GTI last week, and I will say, after driving this now on a back road, I would take this over a GTI. I'd probably take the Golf R over both of them, though. But all of that stuff aside, if this car does one thing for me, it makes me very excited about the new Type R. All right. The Accord SI. <laughs> Listen, I agree it is large. It is large. It looks like an Accord. I've said the same thing about the uh, the Civic, obviously, right? The, well, sorry, the non-SI Civic. Yeah, so Thomas and I but, had a discussion earlier about the Type R, because we're both quite excited for the Type R. Yes, we always are. And th the argument is Thomas would rather it be smaller so that when the Type R comes, it's his perfect version of a Type R. But there's no Accord Type R, so if you do a halfway... This is pretty much like the halfway between yeah, the Civic SI Honda, and... A Honda are kind of giving everyone something they don't want. 
Um, but like, at what point, like, I know the Accord is a little bit bigger, a little bit nicer, a little more comfortable, longer wheelbase, better ride, a whole thing, but like, this is so usable as a car, it, in my opinion, kind of makes the Accord a little bit pointless. I see what you mean. Right? Like, well, especially this has got like, you know, a punchy little engine, it's fun, it's- Except, except, this is manual only, and so is the Type R, whereas the Accord, you get the 10-speed with the two-liter strong engine, it's still the only way to it's get- It's true, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is significantly quicker in a straight line, obviously. But the SI we only get in sedan form now. There's no coupe, there's no hatchback, and oh, sorry, right. I know the Americans say coupe, just, I'm from a different place. It's, um, it's you saying coupe, so coupe. Coupe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get a sedan only. The hatch still looks like a sedan this generation anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, uh, listen, I really like the front end of this car. The, it's, it's so strange. I feel like enough people complain. We've talked about this obviously in our other one. Enough people complain about the previous gen. I fell there earlier, actually. It was I didn't a, even fall. It was a full fall. I, I was fl flying with style. It hurt a lot. Um, I used the Civic to slow my fall. Um, no respect. <laughs> but... I, I forgot what I was saying now. Talking about the front end. Oh yeah, it's much simpler. I think it's better looking, but I think the rest of this. Car, You're talking about the Civic gen this generation of Civic. Yeah, in yeah. this because this has the HPD kind of splitter added on, right? And, yeah. and, and some stuff on the rear. And too. we got the and the honeycomb as well in the middle. Yeah, which you kind of said looks broken from certain from, angles. From certain angles, it looks yeah. like a broken like it wind. Does, it someone does. smashed it in. No, it's good looking though, but I think that the rest of the car is a little bit too plain. I don't mind it. I think it, I think it looks sharp. It looks upmarket. And Mazda have tried to go out market and they've changed things. Honda, with the single mass flywheel, they've still kept yeah. the sportiness, even if it looks more upmarket, which mm. I think is the right combination. I agree 100%. Like the, the, the sporty nature of this is, is correct. And this is, what's the color game? Sonic gray. Sonic gray. So it launched in blazing orange, which is probably what you've seen before. But this is Sonic gray, and I think it looks great. I, see, I can't get over these color names that they come up with. Like, what does that even mean? Sonic gray. Making noise. Nothing. I don't. Yeah, but I do like gloss. I like gloss. Um, no, it, it's a really, over. it's a really cool spec. And I think, I think you know, talking about the, the the fact that it's got sharper looking and a bit more premium looking. Yeah. It's kind of like Harry Potter. The audience of the Civic Si has grown older as the books got more serious. So has the Si. Okay, I guess. So yeah. Take, that, that, take in, that. It, yeah, it's true. Interesting analogy. But at the same time, I mean, I do want my Civic to be. Like, I'm not a Civic guy, to be fair, so I guess I don't really have a, a, a sword in this fight. That's not the saying. Um, <laughs> yes, we'll stick to it. Um, but I, I kind of want it to be, like, smaller, a little bit more, like, you know, in fun, racy, like, kind of... It really drives like that. Yeah, it's true. Um, should we look at the interior? Because there's some really cool stuff in this that we get in Canada. Well, we that... actually have some cool stuff on the outside. Oh, really? Fog lights. Oh, that's right. You, in the States, you guys have a small black yeah. square. And where fog would be. Yeah. indicators on the wing mirrors. And Why is that not necessary in America? I don't know what, what's don't going know. on. But yeah, the inside gets even better stuff. Oh. All right, SI specific things. So first of all, yeah. I want to I take this moment to kind of retract something I said in the normal Civic review. Ooh, I'm excited. So no, I, I liked, mm -hmm. I love the interior for, for its form, function over form vibe, but I, I argued that it wasn't future proof. Oh, I thought you were going to retract something not car related, like. I, got, I am not a crook. <laughs> um, okay. Go ahead. I, I think I said it wasn't future proof, but since then we've been in the Mark 8 Golf and that made a lot of mistakes that it should never have done. And I'm, I, I come here and it's like a, it's like stepping out of a cold pool into a warm jacuzzi. It's just so wonderful. Yeah, everything feels. What did you describe it as? Uh, it, uh, it feels like warm soup. What did you like in that too? It was a show that you watch. I think, what is it? I heard um, it, uh, it was a, a, it, a Downton Abbey. Maggie That's Smith what it was. is a national treasure. <laughs> all right? How can you be McGonagall and it doesn't. She's anyway. McGonagall and everything. Anyway. She's brilliant. So, yeah, so you didn't like this at first, um, but I mean, I, I always kind of liked it. I thought it was. My, neat. my concern it was. It hides the vents. It does hide the vents. My yeah. concern was that in five years, this would look very old. And I, I'll still, I'll still see if that happens. But right now, I'm just grateful for the functionality of it. Yes, and 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 they have said specifically that they engineered the buttons to have an expensive click to them. And they they do. They do. They do. They're like they're not quite Audi level, where like the person in the back seat could literally hear the click. But there is like a really satisfying. No, but little... there's a softness to them that feels yep. feels luxurious. Yeah, it's it's very it's very nice. They're, they're class above materials at the touch points. Okay, so... as they say, class above. What does that even mean? Because this still looks a little bit like a security guard's uniform. It is better he's now a security guard for like he's the security manager yeah for like prada right instead yeah. Of Macy's. so yeah. so his his like 
Yeah, so it, it, <laughs> his weave of fabric it, is a little bit higher we, end. We likened this fabric to a security guard uniform when we first reviewed the Civic SI, yeah. the, the previous generation. This is a huge step above the previous gen. Yeah, it SI is. stuff. We have the red ring going around here. We've got the red stitching. We've got red accents. Everything you see that's red is basically SI. The stitching on the on the shifter. Yep. Um, and then they haven't done it in the back. I think they tried to save money. But the Type R of Lost, the current Type R, yeah, is also red in the front, just black in the back. So. It's not weird for Honda to go cheaper in the back. Right. However, mm. so begins the Canadian stuff. We, you guys ready? Because we yeah. get a lot of stuff. And we'll just say sorry, Americans, now, just because. Sorry. Because it's a Canadian way. Look at that. I'm doing one of the Canadian things right now. I'm doing one too. Are you doing one? Is that, got... There's some Canadian stuff over there. I guess she got some shift lights. So, so we have the shift lights as you've seen. Yeah. Um, which are very cool. We have heated steering wheel, heated seats, heated rear seats. Boom. Right, we've got two zone climate control. <laughs> um, we have wireless charging. Well, they don't get that in the States? They don't get it. But nobody needs to charge their phone in the US? I don't know why. Do they know that half of the US is cold? Also, I think this should be a requirement. If a car has wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, which this does, yes, you it, should be you able should to be drop able to your touch. phone to wirelessly charge. Uh, ooh, and also, and I mean, everything else pales in comparison to this, but okay. if you go to the individual drive mode, in America, Ooh, this is a big one. This is a big one. You, you guys get, ready? You get to change your engine and steering. No suspension this time. We can change the gauge from normal to sport. Yeah, and the change the change in the gauge cluster is frankly catastrophic. It, like it, it basically morphs <laughs> like a transformer into an entirely new object. But then wait, if you need to go undercover, no, invisible, no, instantly invisible. No, no one knows you're sporty now. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think they've done a great job in here. No, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sad that the Americans don't get to enjoy the same thing. Like, who does? There are parts of the US that get colder than Canada. Yes, yeah. Why wouldn't they want heated seats? I don't know, but like, even with all of the, the stuff aside that silly Americans don't get, um, this is an amazing interior. It's, lovely. it's and, still nice. And this shift is a massive upgrade on the normal Civic, which looks like a poisonous mushroom that you find in a forest. <laughs> this is way better. Not the fun kind, right? Way better. No, this is the, the, the space in here, the headroom, the seats are, these are the SI specific seats. Yes. And they're maybe a little bit stiff, but they're, they're very comfortable. Yeah, well, no these haven't been worked in, so maybe they'll be worked in. Yeah, but no, there's a lot of space in here. It's a really nice looking interior. I think it's going to age well because it's kind of just a classic interior with like a dashboard and then a gauge cluster, and then a steering wheel. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing too insane here. They, they went safe, because the last couple generations of Civic were a bit, Overstyled? like, zany, yeah. right, is the word. Like, especially two generations ago, like, they decided, like, you know what we should do is take the dashboard and put this bit of it 10 feet further forward than this bit. Oh, also, I, I think we get a full digital gauge cluster. I think in the States they get half. Like the Accord? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Infotainment's quite nice as well. It's reasonably quick. It has a physical volume knob. Yeah. So well, I really learned. enjoyed saying that. Yeah. Um, I, I've got nothing see, to... See, the thing is, they listened. When, when we complained enough that the, the previous Civic had the little volume slider, I wonder if VW is going to... I guess they just didn't watch the Honda videos, and now, now they get to watch their own Golf videos and be like, oh, shit. Oh, what have we done? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of car here. There is. For the, the price, whatever, wherever it is that you're paying. Um, what is it here, this one? 33 33 Canadian? Yeah. You can't do the exact exchange, because I think people who have done that have worked out it's cheaper here than in America, but that's not fair. All right? Different cost of living. Fair different for me. Different <laughs> factors. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I think this is a great car. I don't really have any major issues with it. I think it could be a little bit smaller, but other than that, time for a conclusion? Yeah. Okay. So, as a fun daily that gives back to the driver, this new SI is better than the outgoing. And thanks to its intuitive and simple interior, it might just win over the GTI buyer. If your focus at the 30 grand mark is just pure sportiness, it simply won't match something like a GR86 or a Subaru BRZ, but the SI will have one up on those in comfort, ride, insulation, fuel economy, practicality. Yeah, that's quite a few things, isn't it? Well done, Honda. Thanks for watching. <laughs>